The Illuminati. We I've had people on here and they talk about the Illuminati. Do you believe in it? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, people come on and think it's real. Yeah. Okay. So, like, what are the other ones? There's the Illuminati, and who are the other ones that are like that? Um, there's like other secret yeah. groups, right? Yes. 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 Secret societies. Right. I'm like. I'm rich as fuck. I'm Jewish. Nobody asked me to join any of them secret societies, right? right. Nobody. I'm like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Can I at least get an invite to a cocktail party? <laughs> nobody. Nobody. I'm like, okay, maybe it's me. <laughs> they figure that you go, you go, you go, uh, uh, blow the lid on the thing. Mark. No, if it's cool. I mean, I've been to many parties. I haven't said shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Madam VP, you were raised by a single mom. What did that experience tell you about your mom and what did it tell you about you? Well, it told me that one of the things that is precious is to build community and family. Okay. Like my mother, um, she, she understood that there is a community that she wanted her children to be raised in. Mm -hmm. And she was very intentional and purposeful about that. And so I always say to people, even when I took the stage as the nominee for the Democratic nomination, that, you know, there is the family that you have by birth and there is also the family you have by love. And they're equally family. Yes. Right. And I learned that from my mother. So my mother, I had all these aunties and uncles. My Uncle Sherman, who was one of the first black men to graduate from Berkeley School of Law, who, when we were young girls, sat us down and taught us how to play chess. Because Uncle Sherman said, you need to understand how the chess board works because that's the way the world works. They're going to be different players with different moves. Mm -hmm. And you need to see the whole board. Mm -hmm. My mother raised us around, like my Auntie Chris, who went to Howard in the 50s and pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha. <laughs> And she was one of my incredible role models growing up. And that was one of the big reasons I wanted to go to Howard University and pledge Alpha Kappa Alpha. Those are some of the lessons that I've learned from my mother. And I try to also share with people, right, which is the beauty of community. And it's it's the way I am, right, which is, you know, the children in my life, whether they be my own or, you know, my godchildren or whomever, right, that... It, it's a collective responsibility that we have. Did you did you know you were different? I mean, were there a lot of people in the community that looked like you or like your mom? Or, or, or did your mom tell you you were different? Well, my mother taught us to, and, and everyone in my growing up, you know, the, they would tell all of us kids that we were special. Okay. I don't think we were particularly special. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But they told us we were, and we believed yeah, them. Yes. We believed them. Tyler Perry. See that? This one, you can see this one clear, clear as day, clear as day. Okay. Look at that. That's not natural, you guys. Now, um, and you could tell that there's something going on with Tyler Perry's face anyways. But that's what I mean when, when, I, when you can see the mask. And this goes, this is like a whole suit. Um, it's very thin latex layers that give you uh, size, extra, extra size. You know, it goes down to the torso, it's the neck, it goes over the ears. These are very advanced masks and they're used to deceive us and they're getting better and better every day. Um, if you listen to the voice on Tyler Perry speak when he speaks, you will clearly, clearly, clearly hear Will Smith. It, you know, she was so happy to have that. It, it's very sentimental for me and, and we do a lot of shooting down here for a lot of the shows. It's always it's always really uh, fun and powerful and it's a good memory of her to be down here. She was very proud of it. You don't try to build a wall. You know <laughs>
Greetings visitors to foxnewsnyu.com Black Wolf the Dragon Master, New York's unofficial wizard and Sir Aragorn, his faithful dragon here to remind you New Yorkers use your imaginations responsibly and meaningfully the future of your city might simply depend upon it enough said if you know, you know. Wait, celebrity skin suits? Fred Savage? I'm also Tony Danza, Cameron Mannheim, Malcolm Jamal Warner, Kevin Nealon, John Forsyth, and Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich. Call it bizarre, kind of disturbing, and a little freakish. Emma peels away a latex mask and bust to reveal the Sophia. Just can't help but wonder what's going on. All right, now that had to be CGI. Where's the hair? See that? This one, you can see this one clear, clear as day. Clear as day. Okay. Wait, isn't that the same Tyler Perry who literally wears skin suits and acts as other characters? Um, if you listen to the voice on Tyler Perry's speak when he speaks, you will clearly hear will smith you know she was so happy to have that it, it's very sentimental for me and, and we do a lot Maybe. of shooting down here for a lot of the shows i've been totally computer generated since like the 90s we do a lot of shooting down here for a lot of the shows it's 2019 y'all nothing's real that's a costume that's a i think that's such a, an important part of what we can all do for the children mm -hmm. and the children in our lives and um you know, but my mother raised two black girls to be proud black women. One of you back to music. One of the soundtracks from my childhood was, you know, you are young, gifted and black. You know, mm -hmm. and that's what it was. I'll get the phone number later. <laughs> and we're back, America. Your moderators. They got a hankering for Call of Duty. They're off playing Black Ops 6. Scrap this shit. What is democracy without feedback? <laughs> <laughs> and without some freebies. Here comes some free t-shirts. Three-pointer. You lost your mom to cancer. Yeah. You were very close to your mom because you was a single parent, and that was pretty much what you had, although you had a community yes. to help raise you. Yes. How did you deal, how did you cope with that loss? Grief is difficult. It's difficult. You know, there are two sides to the coin about when you have relationships in your life that touch you deeply, mm -hmm. and then to lose that person, it leaves a big void, it right? Does. That's the two sides. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, part of what, I was just talking about this, but the big part about grief is, especially if you lose somebody to, to a sickness, to an illness, mm -hmm. I think it's really important that you try to remember them as they lived and not as they died. Right. Because I think that's how they'd want us to remember mm -hmm. them, but also to remember their suffering, which hopefully was a fraction of their time on this earth, is to compound the grief in a way that I think it, it adds to the pain and what they'd want is that their active memory that our active memory of them is about when they were vibrant and alive. Right. So. Let's get into things that will change what will happen if you were to become president, say in the next 12 to 13 days. Polls suggest that voters trust President Trump, former President Trump, more on the economy. Um, what can you tell the voters, our viewing audience, our listening audience, that if you were to become president, while Madam VP Kamala Harris will be much better on the economy than what President Trump was. Well, so I'm really glad you brought that up, Shannon. So first of all, let's clear up certain myths. Okay. You know those checks that went out? Yes, those skimmies. Right, <laughs> right. The stimulus check. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, right, yes, yeah, you, yes. You, We gotta be for stimulus, <laughs> but they call them stimmies, okay. The reason those came about is because there was a Democratic majority in the House of Representatives in Congress. Mm -hmm. People like Maxine Waters, people like Hakeem Jeffries, right? Yes. Um, who 
did the work of pushing to say people need help right now and we need to send out checks. There was a whole lot of opposition to it, including from Donald Trump's White House. Yes, even him. I think he was and resistant him, to it at first. Yes. That's why those checks, remember, Congress holds the purse. Yes. So really, Congress wrote those checks. But then Donald Trump, unlike any president before or after, decided he put his name on those checks. <laughs> so therefore, people thought... So people thought, Donald Trump gave me that check. <laughs> and so let's clear that up first and foremost. Okay. But let's also deal with where he was in terms of his policies on the economy. He gave the biggest tax cuts for billionaires and the biggest corporations which caused an incredible deficit. He tried to get rid of the Affordable Care Act, which we also call Obamacare, mm -hmm. which benefited so many people, including and in particular, black people in America who otherwise were denied by the insurance company's health coverage because of pre-existing conditions. Yes, that's most important. Let, let the people know. Right. With a, with a Affordable Care Act, if you have a pre-existing condition, insurance companies can no longer deny you coverage. That's exactly right. And if you think about what that means in the context of also knowing the big health disparities we have in the black community right. and how more likely, therefore, black folks might be to have pre-existing conditions. High blood pressure, diabetes. All of that. cancers. All of that. Yes. Asthma mm -hmm. for our children. Yes. Sickle cell treatment. It's all of that. So by getting rid of the pre-existing condition ban, what that did, but he wanted to get rid of the Affordable Care Act. Right. What we have done and part of my policies going forward include what we need to do to not only retain the cap that we got on insulin at $35 a month for seniors, by the way, black folks are 60% more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. Correct. He wants to get rid of it with that Project 2025. Everybody needs to check that out. What he would do to get rid of Social Security or at least raise the age to 70, so you'd have to work to 70 to, to be able to qualify. Right. Get rid of Medicare, get rid of the Affordable Care Act. And that's just on health policy, not to mention bringing back not only tax cuts for the richest people, but what he would do that is about eliminating or reducing the ability of corporations to require, be required to pay overtime, overtime pay. So you have you could work and the corporations wouldn't have to pay you for it. for overtime Who work for free. That's right. <laughs> and overtime means you are actually working a longer day, which means you are more tired. Right. Which means it requires more exertion. That's why we have overtime pay. So you don't take advantage of workers. In addition to all of that, we're looking at Donald Trump, basically somebody who has never been understanding of the issues that affect the community about disparities. And I'm going to talk, for example, about how when he was a, a landlord, he denied rent to black families. Mm -hmm. You look at what he did in terms of taking out a full page ad in the New York Times against the Central Park Five, correct. which were a bunch of, uh, they're not young adults, they were teenagers, teenagers, black and brown teenagers, took out a full page ad on the New York, in the New York Times calling for their execution for crimes they did not commit, they were innocent. Donald Trump, who said of the first black president in the United States, the birtherism, mm -hmm. to have people question whether he was born in the United States to try and diminish. And then most recently, you look in this very election, Legal black immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, mm -hmm. saying they're eating their pets. So, I, you know, so part of what we have to help people understand is don't think you're in Donald Trump's club. You're not. Right. He's not going to be thinking about you. You think he's having you over for dinner? You think that when he's going, when he's with his buddies... His billionaire buddies, he's thinking about what we need to do to deal with addressing, for example, my work around what I'm doing to address disparities in black men's health around colon cancer, around what we need to do around screenings, what we need to do around prostate cancer. Black men are twice as likely to have and screenings, what we need to do to address. I'm a survivor of prostate cancer. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Do. Go James and the Lakers are back putting on a show. And you know I got to get the best deal on tickets. That's why I need to tell you about my sponsor, SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more sports. I'm excited to go see the Lakers dominate the Sixers at the Crip. They put all their tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So look for the green dots, green 
green means good, red means bad. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code Shay Shay for twenty dollars off tickets at SeatGeek. That's twenty dollars off your first purchase with promo code Shay Shay. Do you would you want to touch on some specific things you would like to do to keep them because the economy seems to be heading in the right direction, but the inflation, gas prices are extremely high, groceries are extremely high, this rent. I mean, it used to be when I was renting, they moved the rent up forty dollars a year. Now they moved it up four hundred. So let's talk about that. I, I'm glad you raised that. So, for example, what, let, groceries. Yes, the prices are still too high. You know what I know. It. Yeah. Part of my plan is to deal with price gouging. I did it when I was attorney general. I'm gonna do it as president. Which is these companies that will jack up the prices of groceries to take advantage of people in need, and mm -hmm. in particular during a crisis like what like you see pandemic. around the pandemic or Hurricane yes. Helene. Yes. Milk. Right. Yes. Milton, mm -hmm. right? So there's that. In terms of housing, first of all, we know that black families are 40% less likely to own their home. Mm. And we can go back to redlining. Mm -hmm. We can go back to, to policies that were by law or practice meant to not give black folks equal opportunity to home ownership, especially in certain neighborhoods. We can go back to what happened around the GI Bill. Yeah. And we're, when, when all those, the great generation we called them came back and there was federal policy to say, you all fought for our country. We're going to give you a boost around helping you buy homes. But those black servicemen, and it was mostly men, those black servicemen did not. So you had then a time when there was a boost. Mm -hmm. For it ended up being not for black service members. So part of my policy is to one, create a, a fund so that we will give a $25,000 down payment to first time homeowners okay. to just help people get in the door. We will deal with the rent issue because part of what we're seeing in Atlanta, in places across our country is these corporations are buying up all these properties. Mm -hmm which means then that they don't have to deal with competition between the properties and they're jacking up rent costs. So it's about also going after that corporate gouging around what they're doing to buy up and then jack up the prices of rent. We also need to help people with small business ownership. I did, even before I was running for president, a tour, I called it the, the Opportunity Economy Tour, focused on black men and black entrepreneurs. What we know is unlike Donald Trump, we got $400 million handed to him practically on a silver platter. And by the way, Shannon filed for bankruptcy six times. Mm. Everybody wants to say he's a great businessman. Take a look at his record. I know that so many of our entrepreneurs who have great ideas don't have access to capital, but they have serious work ethic, great ideas, and a plan to do the work. So part of my plan is to increase access to capital, including giving $20,000 forgivable loans for startup capital, for people to buy the equipment. Right. And then to change the tax deduction. So whereas it is now $5,000 to make it $50,000 to start a new business, because nobody can start a new business on $5,000. No. And the direct benefit when we're looking at black entrepreneurs is profound. And all it is is about saying this. Americans in general, regardless of their race or gender, we have ambition, we have aspirations, we have dreams, but not everyone has access to the opportunity to let some actually accomplish that. I want to increase access to opportunity. Listen, unfortunately, I've gone viral a few times, but I've never gone viral for GLP ones for weight loss. So you probably heard about the once weekly shot that can help you lose an average of 20% of your weight in a year when combined with diet and exercise. But you also may have heard that out of pocket costs can be huge and figuring out insurance coverage is wild. Now Roe is making it easier to see if you're covered for GLP ones to help you get the best price out there. Want to hear my favorite part? They'll check for free. Yep, it won't cost you a dime to find out if your insurance will cover GLP ones. 100,000 members and counting have trusted Roe to check their coverage and get the meds at the best price possible, depending on their insurance plan. Just submit your insurance card and Roe will create a personal insurance coverage report so you can understand your options. Go to roe.co slash Shannon for your free insurance coverage report. That's ro.co slash Shannon. Start losing weight sooner with GLP ones through row. Madam VP, if you were to become president, what measures would you put in place to make sure Social Security benefits continue? Because there are reports that it could possibly be depleted by 2033. And there are estimated that 11,000 people turn at least 65 years of age every single day. Yeah. 
So what are you going to do to make sure because that you know, people, disability, retirement, yeah. uh, survivors with beneficiaries. What are you going to do to make sure that that continues? So, Shannon, to your point, there was an independent economic review of Donald Trump's plan, mm -hmm. which shows that Social Security in the next six years would be insolvent under his plan, meaning that it would not be able to pay out what hardworking people who deserve dignity in their retirement mm -hmm. deserve. And as you and I both know, there are a lot of our seniors who their only source of income is that Social Security That's check. Correct. Right. Yes. It's there. The only way they're going to pay the rent or have food on the table. So my plan is about doing what we need to do to put the resources back into Social Security, but also expanding it. Because here's part of the problem with Social Security is that for our aging seniors, if they are a couple, for example, and one of the spouses passes, that cuts their Social Security benefits almost in half. Mm -hmm. So part of my plan is to reconfigure it so that that surviving spouse does not then have a Ooh. crisis where they've already lost their loved one. Uh, but we also just have to understand in a, on a macro level, we've got to require that billionaires and corporations pay their fair share, right? They can afford to. And that's part of what is the difference between me and, and Donald Trump. My plan is about tax cuts for small businesses, for working people, for middle class people. A hundred million Americans will benefit around tax cuts. My plan is that no taxes will be raised for anybody making less than $400,000 a year. My plan is that we give young parents a $6,000 child tax credit to help them pay for child care for a, a crib or a car seat, because you and I both know the vast majority of our young parents have a natural desire to parent their children well, but not always the resources. And back to the way I was raised, I know that the children of the community are the children of the community. That you and I will benefit from that young family mm -hmm. having the resources they need. So it's about all of us benefiting, but it's a, it's a state of mind and it's a perspective. Mine is about thinking about the challenges people face and getting them help. Donald Trump is full-time focused on himself. You watch his rallies. He will spend full time talking about, uh, I was going to say Freddy Krueger, Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> Might as well be Freddy Krueger. Hannibal Lecter. Mm -hmm. He'll spend full time talking about his grievances, about what everyone has done to him. He'll talk about himself, but he does not talk about the American people. He does not talk about what he's going to do for middle class. He does not talk about what he's going to do for families, for working people. And we're 12 days out. This is probably one of the most serious elections that we have faced in our lifetime. My perspective, and I will be the kind of president who spends full time focused on the needs of the people. That has been my career. I have spent my whole career as a public servant trying to uplift the condition of other people knowing what is possible and doing it with a sense of optimism. On January 20th, a new president is going into the White House. Mm -hmm. Period. A new president is going into the White House. Do you want to look at the Oval Office and see a Donald Trump who's going to be sitting there filling out his enemies list, spending full time figuring out retribution and revenge? or looking at the Oval Office and knowing you have a president in there who is creating a to-do list that's about what to do to help the American people. So raising minimum age of Social Security, that's not on the table for you? No, no. Here's how, look, people work hard all their lives and they deserve to be able to retire with dignity. I'll tell you how I come at this. I come at it from a number of perspectives, including thinking about how I was raised in terms of how you take care of the elders, mm -hmm. right? I think about it in terms of taking care of my mother when she was sick and dying from cancer. Mm -hmm. So one of my policies, for example, is to help Medicare pay for home health care for seniors. Why? Because Look, I did it, and it, it means, you know, trying to cook for an elder to make something they feel like eating, right? To help them put on a sweater. And we have so many people who are in the sandwich generation. They're raising their young kids and taking care of their parents. And either they have to deplete their savings to qualify for Medicaid, mm -hmm. right? To be able to help pay for home health care. Or they have to quit their job 
to do the work of taking care of their kids and their parent. And I just believe that's not right, that we should have policies that give people dignity, especially our seniors. So my plan is Medicare pays for home health care. Okay. And no, I would not raise the age of eligibility for Social Security because the same thing. We shouldn't force people to work until they're 70 in order to retire and have a moment to just enjoy their life and not worry about how they're going to pay their rent. Is Medicare for all a priority for you? What is a pri No. What is a priority for me is making sure that access to health care is a right and not just a privilege of those who can afford it. Mm -hmm. That's why I am in favor of and have pushed and been a leader on capping the cost of insulin at $35 a month. And why I intend to allow Medicare to actually negotiate against the big pharmaceutical companies to bring down the cost of prescription medication for everybody. That's why I have fought for what we need to do around making sure Medicare covers senior care. Access to health care should not be a question of how much money you have in your back pocket. That's just not right. right. And I feel strongly about that. <laughs> um, blacks for Trump. Mm -mm. They feel that Trump is better for the black community. Can you explain the Donald Trump's history with blacks? Where did this come that all of a sudden, I mean, it's, it's been like this because a lot of people used to say, uh, I'm, I'm Donald Trump or the ghetto because he was, I mean, for a lot of blacks, not all, but for some blacks, he was, Madam VP, whether we want to admit it or not, he's revered by some blacks. But here's the thing, the question for everybody, should he be president of the United States? Okay. Right? That's the question. Should he have the ability to, to sit behind the seal of the President of the United States when he says he wants to terminate the Constitution of the United States? You know what that would mean? In the Constitution of the United States is your Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable search and seizure. Your Fifth Amendment right. Mm -hmm. Your Sixth Amendment right to an attorney. Well, a lot right? of rights gonna be gone. The First Amendment. But, but <laughs> the First Amendment, the Second Amendment. Yes. Look, I'm in favor of the Second Amendment. I don't believe we should be taking anybody's guns away. He wants to terminate the Constitution of the United States. He is the same one, like I said earlier, who denied rent to black families, who took out that full page ad in the New York Times calling for the execution of those children, who, who birtherism accusations against the first black president. Not to mention his, please ask folks to Google Project 2025. Yeah. He would get rid of the $35 a month cap on insulin. We know how many of our seniors had it. I'll give you another example of why Donald Trump has not earned the support of folks to be president of the United States again. When he was president the last time, mm -hmm. during the height of COVID, during the height of COVID, one in three black Americans knew somebody who died from COVID. You remember those days? Mm -hmm. I do and people couldn't get their hands on a COVID test, at that very same time, Donald Trump as president secretly sent COVID tests to the president of Russia for his personal use. While Americans were dying every day, he has not earned the right to be president of the United States. It's one thing if he has a television show that's very popular, mm -hmm. he can put his name on a building even though we all know he was not a terribly good businessman, which is why he filed for bankruptcy six times. But that is one thing. To be president of the United States means to try and find common ground, to build consensus, to lift up the American people instead of trying to beat people down all the time. It means solving problems, which means you have to be able to get out of your own head and scan to be concerned about the well-being of other people and then do something about it. Does anyone think Donald Trump thinks that way? Yeah, well, empathy requires you to divorce your own ego to see yourself as someone else. That's exactly right. That's exa And we know that's not his character. So it's about, is this the right person for that job, mm -hmm. right? He said immigrants are taking black jobs. I don't know what those black jobs that they're taking. Um, can you elaborate on that? What? The, Im the immigrants are taking what black jobs are they well, it's just another example of him trying to divide and him trying to scare people it's just another example of him doing that of him trying to say it's either you or them 
right? Mm-hmm. And the other thing is that it's incredibly demeaning because, and he still has not been forced to define, Donald Trump, what, what do you define as a black job? Because let me tell you what I define as a black job. Vice President of the United States. That's a good one. Right? <laughs> it is. I don't know about the pay, but it's a good job to have. That'll be <laughs> well, you know, not everybody is Shannon Sharp. <laughs> no, no, no but, but you know what I wanted to ask? I, you've been in basically your adult life. You've been a public servant. Yes, I have. You've been AG. My whole adult life. You've been a DA. Yeah. You've been a senator. You've been VP. Is that what you envisioned? Is that what you always wanted to be was a public servant? I've always wanted to serve. You know, I was raised, I mean, back to whether you are, however you are raised in the community in which you are raised, including the church in which you are raised, I have always believed that it is an important pursuit to figure out how you can serve. And and we can do it in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. I chose public service. You chose a different route, but it's about service. Mm -hmm. And I have always, I mean, I've only had one client my entire life, the people. And what I, and the reason I keep doing it is because I know the difference that I and we can make Mm -hmm. when we believe in what is possible and then work hard at it. And my pledge in this campaign to everyone, regardless of who you are, where you live, what you look like, I will be a president for all Americans. And I will work to bring our country back together because frankly, I think people are exhausted with the anger with the hate, with the the division, the attempt to have Americans pointing their fingers at each other. I think people are exhausted. It's not healthy for the productivity of our country. Like, do we want to strive? Do we want to thrive? Or do we want to spend full time with vengeance, demeaning other people? And living a life of service is about I think the importance of lifting people up, not tearing them down. My team here at Shea Shea Media is always growing and making moves. Sometimes it's a challenge to find qualified candidates, especially when I need them right away. Thankfully, there's a place you can go for help. ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter does the work for you to make hiring fast and easy. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Shea ZipRecruiter smart technology will start showing your job to qualified candidates immediately. And ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology works fast to find top talent. So you don't waste time or money finding the right candidates. You can invite top candidates for your job to apply to encourage them to apply sooner. Experience faster, easier hiring with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get quality candidates within the first day. See for yourself. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Shea right now to try it for free. That's the same price as a genuine smile from a stranger, a picture-perfect sunset, or even a cute dog running up to you and licking your hand. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Shea Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Shea ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. I've read some blacks say the problem that they have to you is that you're making political promises and that you're just pandering. The problem that I have with that, it just seems like only black people pander. Like when other candidates go on shows and they say they're going to do this, they're not pandering. They're telling you, laying out their elaborate plan on what they're going to do. But it seems to you when you promise that if I'm president, this is what I'm going to do in the first 90 days. This is what I'm going to do. My administration is going to do uh, while I'm in office. You're pandering. How do you get through to those that says, look, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. If I'm elected president, these are the policies and they will lead to meaningful and impactful change. Well, part of it is is just to be candid. I think that there's there's sadly a misinformation out there about who I am and what I've done because if if people are informed about fact they will know that almost everything that I'm talking about doing as president is built on a foundation of work that I've been doing for years Mm -hmm. if it is about economic empowerment of the black community and all communities. I've been working on that Uh, as vice president. I am responsible for billions of dollars 
from big banks and big corporations, including technology companies, getting into community banks to increase access to capital for minority owned and other small businesses. If you look at my work over a period of years, my focus again on something like maternal mortality is long standing, which directly impacts black men and black women. Right. And, 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 and the black family. If you look at the work that I am doing that is about small businesses, you know, the person who helped my mother raise us, who was a second mother to us, was a small business owner. I have always focused for such a long time on what we need to do, knowing that our small businesses are part of the culture of our communities, right? including the economic fabric and, and strength of the community. So what I'm talking about doing right now is based on longstanding work. It's not new. But as President of the United States, part of why it is important is it is a new approach to that job. It is about a new way that is based on a new generation of leadership, that is based on new ideas, and frankly, a different experience that brings my commitment to the work I am talking about um, into being. Can you give us a breakdown of how you will allow blacks and other minorities to access capital? Because you speak yeah. a lot about capital and in order for people to become successful and have some wealth mm -hmm. is that they need to have access yeah, to that to right. get started. So that's in fact why I did starting um, last or earlier this year, my economic opportunity tour way before I was running for president, because I realized that so many of our entrepreneurs don't actually have the, the, that we need to do better in getting information to people about what's available to them. So for example, through the, the small business administration, there are funds available to help people create a business plan. There is resources available to help people just know how that you need to run a payroll, how you need to pay business taxes. Um, part of my plan, by the way, is to simplify taxes for small businesses. I, I like to say it's, it's basically, I'm going to date myself like, you remember the 1040EC? Did you ever have to do a 1040EC? Probably never. No. Okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, simplifying tax returns right. for people, including our small businesses. But the work that I have done and will continue to do is about knowing that we don't lack for hard work. We don't lack for good ideas, but we do lack for information about the help that is available. Mm -hmm. So that's part of how it is going to be about increasing access to capital. Part of it is about putting more money. So I called up and got in touch with and worked with some of the big CEOs of the biggest corporations in America and said, and the big banks, that you all don't necessarily, you, you're not there in the community where you can get a $100,000 loan to a small business. You guys deal at a different level. But those $100,000 loans for a startup will go a long way. Let's get, get those billions of dollars that you've got, put them into community banks, who are in the community, who know what the community needs, what they want, what the consumers there want, and then support those small businesses. So that's the, my approach to access to capital, including making sure that people um, have, again, simplifying taxes for small businesses. You know why, Shannon? Small businesses can't afford to hire a bunch of accountants. Yeah, they can't help you. And a bunch of lawyers. But that shouldn't be the reason they fail because they didn't fill out the form properly. Mm, right. Right. Yes. So my approach is really understanding the the culture, understanding the needs and then trying to fix problems. I love fixing problems with common sense solutions. And again, look, Donald Trump is never he is never going to relate necessarily to the kind of folks that I'm talking about who on the ground just need to be seen and heard. And then let's fix the problems. Let's address the challenges to let them not just get by, but get ahead. And I, I want to put a fine point on this. Maybe it's a new perspective. I think it is. I believe that we have had great success in bringing black unemployment down to historic lows. Yes. But for me, that's a floor. For me, that's a floor. Because what I know is that it should be baseline that everybody's working. That's not enough. People want to build wealth. Yes. And intergenerational wealth. Correct. And I want to help people do that. Right? Mm -hmm. I know what folks want to be able to take a nice vacation right. from time to time, have nice Christmas gifts for their kids under the tree. 
And it can't just be about, well, you've got a job, applaud me for, for what I've done for you. Right. And that's the spirit with which I do my work. I saw President Trump on a, on a TV show and he talked about defunding the Department of Education. Yes. Um, basically, we know that's gonna affect communities like us um, that don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. And then because he says he doesn't, if they talked about slavery, if they talked about slavery, which is a, a part of our history, it's a, it's that a they're stain. trying to cover up. Yes. That they're trying to cover up. They talk about racism. And he said, well, what we would do if they talked about it, they wouldn't get funding. And we know what communities are going to be most impacted by non funding. But, and understand that they. Greetings, visitors to FoxNewsNYU.com. Black Wolf the Dragon Master, New York's unofficial wizard, and Sir Aragorn, his faithful dragon, here to remind you, New Yorkers, use your imaginations responsibly and meaningfully. The future of your city might simply depend upon it. Enough said. <laughs> Tyler Perry. See that? This one, you can see this one clear, clear as day. Clear as day. Okay? Look at that. That's not natural, you guys. Now, um... And you could tell that there's something going on with Tyler Perry's face anyways. But that's what I mean when, when, I, when you can see the mask. And this goes, this is like a whole suit. Um, it's very thin latex layers that give you uh, size, extra, extra size. You know, it goes down to the torso, it's the neck, it goes over the ears. These are very advanced masks and they're used to deceive us and they're getting better and better every day. Um, if you listen to the voice on Tyler Perry speak when he speaks, you will clearly, clearly, clearly hear Will Smith. It you know, she was so happy to have that. It, it's very sentimental for me, and, and we do a lot of shooting down here for a lot of the shows. So it's always, it's always really uh, fun and powerful, and it's a good memory of her to be down here. She was very proud of it. try to build a wall you know? if you know you know wait celebrity skin suits fred savage i'm also tony danza cameron manheim malcolm jamal warner kevin nealon john forsyth and metallica drummer lars ulrich call it bizarre kind of disturbing and a little freakish emma peels away a latex mask and bust to reveal the sophia just can't help but wonder what's going all right now that had to be cgi Where's the hair? No, wait a minute. There is definitely something different about the two of you. <gasps> collagen, 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 collagen. See that? This one, you can see this one clear, clear as day. Clear as day. Okay. Wait, isn't that the same Tyler Perry who literally wears skin suits and acts as other characters? Um, if you listen to the voice on Tyler Perry speak when he speaks, you will clearly hear Will Smith. You know, she was so happy to have that. It, it's very sentimental for me, and, and we do a lot Maybe. of shooting down here for a lot of the shows. I've been totally computer generated since like the 90s. We do a lot of shooting down here for a lot of the shows. It's 2019, y'all. Nothing's real. That's a costume. That's a. He still has not been forced to define Donald Trump. Wh what do you define as a black job? Because let me tell you what I define as a black job: Vice President of the United States. That's a good one, right? <laughs> it is. Come I don't on. know about the pay, but it's a good job to have. That'll be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, not everybody is Shannon Sharp. <laughs> no, no, no but, but you know what I wanted to ask? I, you've been in. Basically, your adult life, you've been a public servant. Yes, I have. You've been AG. My whole adult life. You've been a DA. Yeah. You've been a senator. You've been VP. 
Is that what you envisioned? Is that what you always wanted to be was a public servant? I've always wanted to serve. You know, I was raised, I mean, back to whether you are, however you are raised in the community in which you are raised, including the church in which you are raised. I have always believed that it is an important pursuit to figure out how you can serve. And, and we can do it in different ways, mm -hmm. right? I chose public service. You chose a different route, mm -hmm. but it's about service. Mm -hmm. And I have always, I mean, I've only had one client my entire life, the people. Wow. And what I, and the reason I keep doing it is because I know the difference that I and we can make mm -hmm. when we believe in what is possible and then work hard at it. And my pledge in this campaign to everyone, regardless of who you are, where you live, what you look like, I will be a president for all Americans. And I will work to bring our country back together because frankly, I think people are exhausted with the anger, with the hate, with the, the division, the attempt to have Americans pointing their fingers at each other. I think people are exhausted. It's not healthy for the productivity of our country. Like, do we want to strive? Do we want to thrive? Or do we want to spend full time with vengeance, demeaning other people? And living a life of service is about, I think, the importance of lifting people up, not tearing them down. My team here at Shea Shea Media is always growing and making moves. Sometimes it's a challenge to find qualified candidates, especially when I need them right away. Thankfully, there's a place you can go for help. Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter does the work for you to make hiring fast and easy. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash SheShay. Zip Recruiter smart technology will start showing your job to qualified candidates immediately. Technology works fast to find top talent, so you don't waste time or money finding the right candidates. You can invite top candidates for your job to apply to encourage them to apply sooner. Experience faster, easier hiring with ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get quality candidates within the first day. See for yourself. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Shay right now to try it for free. That's the same price as a genuine smile from a stranger, a picture-perfect sunset, or even a cute dog running up to you and licking your hand. Try it for free at this exclusive web address, ZipRecruiter.com slash Shay Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Shay ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Madam VP, you're a couple of years older than myself, so we kind of grew you. up in the 80s. <laughs> But I'm only I'm only 35. Come on now, I'm your guest. No, but you only 30. But you but we we grew up. But in just a, keep moving because no, no. you. I'm gonna give you a shovel in a minute. I see, I see. You won't let it go. Dang. We could have just moved on past that real quick. But you drew attention to it. But we we grew up in the 70s when music yes. uh, went in fire. Ohio players. Oh yes, fire. You. I mean. Uh, come oh, on. oh, you were like fire! Come on! Oh, okay. I hate dun dun dun. <laughs> yes. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What do you listen to now? Oh, you know, I wish I were listening to more music, to be honest with you, because I love it just. Um, but you don't when have I downtime do, like when you have downtime. I don't have any downtime. Really. I, I, <laughs> oh. I know my little violin I'm playing right now with you. <laughs> I really don't. But when I, I love I love jazz, mm -hmm. you know, if it's from Thelonious Monk to Miles Davis, mm -hmm. I love Aretha. I was just with Stevie. Right, I Stevie's good. Can I tell you? Yes, you can. Bucket list. Stevie Wonder on my birthday sang me happy birthday. Can Happy you believe birthday. birthday to me. <laughs> oh my Can you imagine? No. I was I was literally I it was it was surreal. Can you a bucket list moment right. when Stevie Wonder himself uh, sings you Happy Birthday? As an 18-year-old. Yeah. Could you imagine Never. your life would have been like this Never. this many years Never. later? Never. And let me tell you, my mother loved, she had every Stevie and every Aretha Franklin record. Every album. Like, literally every one of them. So, for, I mean, you know, songs in the key of life. Like, all those, all those Stevie songs that were about everything from the movement to optimism. I would have never, at 18 thought that he'd be singing me happy birthday ever <laughs> never never th that's the least i mean but uh, uh, obviously everybody knows who stevie and he was a child prodigy 13 years yes, old and yes. he was doing great things but to see 
Madam VP, what you've been able to do. You've had so many firsts. The first attorney general, uh, woman attorney general, yeah. African American, Asian American descent. Yeah. You were the DA of San Francisco. You were the first uh, uh, Indian American uh, uh, U.S. senator. To and be- second black woman ever in the history of the United States Senate elected. Second in the history of the United States Senate. Have you had an opportunity to sit back and reflect and say, wow, but work is not yet done? That's more where I am. The work is not done. The work is not yet done. There's so much to do. I mean, from to your point, being in the Senate. So I, there is a weight of responsibility that I, I know we all feel mm-hmm. right when we have been blessed with an experience that allows us to be a role model. Great. And to hopefully inspire people and to remind them of what's important or or point out the things that need to be addressed. So, for example, as only the second black woman elected to the United States Senate, I took on a real role of leadership around black maternal mortality, which affects black women and affects their spouses, their husbands, their families, their children. And I feel a sense of responsibility and um, a very strong duty to make sure that I use my voice and in a way that is about lifting up people who have not always been in the room. I've read some blacks say the problem that they have to you is that you're making political promises and that you're just pandering. The problem that I have with that, it just seems like only black people pander. Like when other candidates go on shows and they say they're gonna do this, they're not pandering. They're telling you, laying out their elaborate plan on what they're going to do. But it seems to you when you promise that if I'm president, this is what I'm going to do in the first 90 days. This is what I'm going to do. My administration is going to do uh, while I'm in office. You're pandering. How do you get through to those that says, look, this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. If I'm elected president, these are the policies and they will lead to meaningful and impactful change. Well, part of it is is just to be candid. I think that there's there's sadly a misinformation out there about who I am and what I've done because if if people are informed about fact they will know that almost everything that I'm talking about doing as president is built on a foundation of work that I've been doing for years Mm -hmm. if it is about economic empowerment of the black community and all communities. I've been working on that Uh, as vice president. I am responsible for billions of dollars from big banks and big corporations, including technology companies, getting into community banks to increase access to capital for minority owned and other small businesses. If you look at my work over a period of years, my focus again on something like maternal mortality is long standing, which directly impacts black men and black women. Right. And, 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 and the black family. If you look at the work that I am doing that is about small businesses, you know, the person who helped my mother raise us, who was a second mother to us, was a small business owner. I have always focused for such a long time on what we need to do, knowing that our small businesses are part of the culture of our communities, right? Including the economic fabric and, and strength of the community. So what I'm talking about doing right now is based on longstanding work. It's not new. But as President of the United States, part of why it is important is it is a new approach to that job. It is about a new way that is based on a new generation of leadership, that is based on new ideas, and frankly, a different experience that brings my commitment to the work I am talking about um, into being. Can you give us a breakdown of how you will allow blacks and other minorities to access capital? Because you speak yeah. a lot about capital and in order for people to become successful and have some wealth mm-hmm. is that they need to have access to yeah, that to right. get started. So that's in fact why I did starting um, last or earlier this year, my economic opportunity tour way before I was running for president, because I realized that so many of our entrepreneurs don't actually have the, the, that we need to do better in getting information to people about what's available to them. So for example, through the, the small business administration, there are funds available to help people create a business plan. There is resources available to help people just know how that you need to run a payroll 
how you need to pay business taxes. Um, part of my plan, by the way, is to simplify taxes for small businesses. I, I like to say it's, it's basically, I'm going to date myself, like, you remember the 1040s? Did you ever have to do a 1040s? Probably never. No. Okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, simplifying tax returns right. for people, including our small businesses. But the work that I have done and will continue to do is about knowing that we don't lack for hard work. We don't lack for good ideas, but we do lack for information about the help that is available. Mm -hmm. Go James and the Lakers are back putting on a show. And you know I got to get the best deal on tickets. That's why I need to tell you about my sponsor, SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more sports. I'm excited to go see the Lakers dominate the Sixers at the Crip. They put all their tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So you look for the green dots, green means good, red means bad. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code SHAYSHAY for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code SHAYSHAY. So that's part of how it is going to be about increasing access to capital. Part of it is about putting more money. So I called up and got in touch with and worked with some of the big CEOs of the biggest corporations in America and said, and the big banks that you all don't necessarily, you, you're not there in the community where you can get a $100,000 loan to a small business. You guys deal at a different level. But those $100,000 loans for a startup will go a long way. Let's get, get those billions of dollars that you've got, put them into community banks who are in the community, who know what the community needs, what they want, what the consumers there want, and then support those small businesses. So that's the, my approach to access to capital including making sure that people um, have, again, simplifying taxes for small businesses. You know why, Shannon? Small businesses can't afford to hire a bunch of accountants yeah, they can't help you. and a bunch yeah. of lawyers. But that shouldn't be the reason they fail because they didn't fill out the form properly. Mm, right. Right? Yes. So my approach is really understanding the the culture understanding the needs and then trying to fix problems i love fixing problems with common sense solutions and again look donald trump is never he is never going to relate necessarily to the kind of folks that i'm talking about who on the ground just need to be seen and heard and then let's fix the problems let's address the challenges to let them not just get by but get ahead and i, I want to put a fine point on this Maybe it's a new perspective. I think it is. I believe that we have had great success in bringing black unemployment down to historic lows. Yes. But for me, that's a floor. For me, that's a floor. Because what I know is that it should be baseline that everybody's working. That's not enough. People want to build wealth. Yes. And intergenerational wealth. Correct. And I want to help people do that. Right? Mm-hmm. I know what folks want to be able to take a nice vacation right. from time to time, have nice Christmas gifts for their kids under the tree. And it can't just be about, well, you've got a job. Applaud me for, for what I've done for you. Right. And that's the spirit with which I do my work. Listen, unfortunately, I've gone viral a few times, but I've never gone viral for GLP once for weight loss. So you probably heard about the once weekly shot that can help you lose an average of 20 percent of your weight in a year when combined with diet and exercise. But you also may have heard that out of pocket costs can be huge and figuring out insurance coverage is wild. Now, Roe is making it easier to see if you're covered for GLP ones to help you get the best price out there. Want to hear my favorite part? They'll check for free. Yep. It won't cost you a dime to find out if you're insured will cover GLP ones. 100,000 members and counting have trusted Roe to check their coverage and get the meds at the best price possible, depending on their insurance plan. Just submit your insurance card and Roe will create a personal insurance coverage report so you can understand your options. Go to roe.co slash Shannon for your free insurance coverage report. That's ro.co slash Shannon. Start losing weight sooner with GLP ones through Roe. I saw President Trump on a on a TV show, and he talked about defunding the Department of Education. Yes. Um, basically, we know that's going to affect communities like us um, that don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. And then because he says he doesn't, if they talked about slavery, if they talked about slavery, which is a, a part of our history, it's a 
It's that they're stain. trying to cover up. Yes. That they're trying to cover up. To talk about racism. And he said, well, what we would do if they talked about it, they wouldn't get funding. And we know what communities are going to be most impacted by non-funding. But and understand that they want to get rid of the Department of Education and get rid of Head Start. You know whose kids are in Head Start? They want to, it, it is, and to your point, and I'm so glad you pointed this out, you know, these are the same people who basically suggested that, that enslaved people benefited from slavery. The same people who are trying to ban and are banning books. Mm -hmm. And again, if we don't teach America's full history, we will never ensure that we don't right. make the same yes. to do those same things again. Let's learn from that pain, that painful part of our history to make sure we don't repeat it. But not by not covering it up, let's have an open and honest conversation about it. It happened. And the effects of it. Yes. And the present day effects of mm -hmm. it. Um, I think we both agree. I think we can all agree on this, that there is a, a, a problem with. I don't know how to the correct term. I think it's undocumented. Mm -hmm. How do we get a, how do we get a hold on that? Uh, Madam VP, how do we make sure? Because I think I've heard you say you want a path to citizenship, but we want to, you know, make sure people come in and do things properly. Yes, that's exactly right. So first of all, I have personally prosecuted transnational criminal organizations mm -hmm. for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. I have prosecuted the Sinaloa cartel, okay, the Guadalajara cartel. So I put my record up to anybody in terms of how strongly I feel about having a secure border mm -hmm. and making sure that there is not that kind of trafficking into America. I also know that we need to put more resources at the border, which is why I supported a bill that came about, including from the most conservative members of Congress, to put 1,500 more border agents at the border, to do what we need to do to cut down the flow of fentanyl coming to, into the United States, which is killing people of every race and background. Would, more resources would have gone to, to prosecuting human trafficking. Donald Trump got word of that bill, and he knew it would be a solution to a problem, which is that we have a broken immigration system. Mm -hmm. He got word of the bill, and he told his friends in Congress, don't put it up for a vote. Don't let it go any further. Because, you see, he wants to run on a He's problem on instead of fixing a problem. Right. And, is, and, is, and is putting out tens of millions of dollars of campaign commercials full time, trying to suggest that he cares about strengthening the border when he had an opportunity to participate in a solution which he killed because he's not about problem solving. It's about a political game for him. My point is we got to strengthen the border and we need to have an immigration system that is fair and humane and strong in terms of making sure that people have to earn citizenship. They have to work hard to get it. My plan includes also strengthening what we need to do in terms of you know illegal entry in between ports of entry. What we need to do to put more support for border patrol agents, put more technology at the border. Uh, but it includes also, you know, I'm never going to talk about people from Haiti eating their pets. Right. And I think that we also know we don't want an immigration system that's about separating children from their parents. Mm -hmm. We can do it in a humane way, but the bottom line is we can fix these problems. The, the solutions are at hand. He, he stands in the way, right. and in particular on this issue. If you were to become president, would you ask Congress to bring, reinstitute that bill and try to get it through? Absolutely. And, and, and also, I would work across the aisle with Republicans. There are a lot of Republicans supporting me right. in this campaign. And I would work with Republicans to bring this bill back up so I can sign it into law. Right. And, I, and I do want to talk about that for a moment. This is not 2016 or 2020 in terms of how people are thinking about Donald Trump. He was president and the people who worked the most closely with him, Republicans at the highest level, his former chief of staff, his former defense secretaries, his former national security advisor, and his former vice president, have collectively said he is dangerous and unfit to be president of the United States. And Shannon, you can just watch his rallies. I mean, did you see that 39 minutes of him swaying back and forth? 
to YMCA? <laughs> no, the, the man, you have to watch, and I encourage everybody who's watching this, watch what he's doing at these rallies. He is increasingly unstable and, and unfit to be president, according to the people who knew him best. All Republicans, by the way, who I'm, I just referred to. Right. Who know he is unfit to be commander in chief. He who will talk about service members. A lot of your listeners and the people who are a fan of your show have served or do serve in the United States military. He talks about military service members as being uh, uncourageous, as being cowards, suckers, and losers. Yeah. This is how the man talks. And so let's not get distracted by who he was on The Apprentice. Right. Let's not get distracted by whatever, you know, building in whatever city in Vegas or wherever has his name on it. Let's look at the job of president of the United States. And is he fit to do that job? And by the people who know him best, including some uh, most recently a four star Marine general, his former chief of staff. They all say those who know him best, he is unfit and dangerous. The previous administration, your administration that you were in, they got kudos for the uh, student loan relief. Yeah. What's the contingency plan? Because I see it's still trying to grow through and some of the courts have shot it down. Do you have a contingency plan to continue the student relief? I'm going to keep fighting for it. And yes, because first of all, what I know is that too many people have been weighed down by their student loan debt yes. to the point they question whether they can have a family, whether they can, can retire at some point, whether they can buy a home. So that's why I pushed for what we did around student loan debt. And thankfully, for example, we have billions of dollars in student loan debt relief that have gone, for example, to public servants like teachers and nurses and firefighters. Um, but there's more we need to do. But, you know, if I go into various communities like here in Atlanta and ask people how many people got their student debt relieved, the number of hands that go up and the life changing experience people have had um, reminds me of the importance of this fight, and I'm going to continue to do it. Have you let people know that President Trump, if he were to get back in the office, he wants to offer police co complete immunity, that they can do no wrong, no matter what, how egregious the act may be, they have complete immunity. Do people understand what that means? Do they really understand what that means, Madam VP? I hope so. And I and I encourage people to go online to see how he says it. I encourage people to go online to see how he talks about um, a day of violence. Did you ever see yeah, the purged. movies? The, right. Understand. Um, I Again, don't take my word for it. Take his. Yeah. Take his. And see where he stands on these issues. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something. Greetings visitors to foxnewsnyu.com. Black Wolf the Dragon Master, New York's unofficial wizard, and Sir Aragorn, his faithful dragon, here to remind you New Yorkers, use your imaginations responsibly and meaningfully. The future of your city might simply depend upon it. Enough said. Like when other candidates go on shows and they say they're going to do this, they're, gonna, they're not pandering. They're telling you, laying out their elaborate plan on what they're going to do. But it seems to you when you promise it, if I'm president, this is what I'm going to do. Like when other candidates go on shows and they say they're going to do this, they're, they're not pandering. They're telling you, laying out their elaborate plan on what they're going to do. But it seems to you when you promise it, if I'm president, this is what I'm going to do in the first 90 days. This is what I'm going to do. My administration is going to do uh, while I'm in office. You're pandering. How do you get through to those that says, look, this is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. If I'm elected president, these are the policies and they will lead to meaningful and impactful change. Well, part of it is is just to be candid. I think that there's there's sadly a misinformation out there about yes. who I am and what I've done, because if if people are informed about fact, they will know that almost everything that I'm talking about doing as president 
is built on a foundation of work that I've been doing for years. Mm -hmm. If it is about economic empowerment of the black community and all communities, I've been working on that. Uh, as vice president, I am responsible for billions of dollars from big banks and big corporations, including technology companies, getting into community banks to increase access to capital for minority owned and other small businesses. If you look at my work over a period of years, my focus again on something like maternal mortality is long standing, which directly impacts black men and black women. Right. And, 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 and the black family. If you look at the work that I am doing that is about small businesses, you know, the person who helped my mother raise us, who was a second mother to us, was a small business owner. I have always focused for such a long time on what we need to do, knowing that our small businesses are part of the culture of our communities, right? Including the economic fabric and, and strength of the community. So what I'm talking about doing right now is based on longstanding work. It's not new. But as President of the United States, part of why it is important is it is a new approach to that job. It is about a new way that is based on a new generation of leadership, that is based on new ideas, and frankly, a different experience that brings my commitment to the work I am talking about um, into being. Listen, unfortunately, I've gone viral a few times, but I've never gone viral for GLP once for weight loss. So you probably heard about the once weekly shot that can help you lose an average of 20 percent of your weight in a year when combined with diet and exercise. But you also may have heard that out of pocket costs can be huge and figuring out insurance coverage is wild. Now, Ro is making it easier to see if you're covered for GLP ones to help you get the best price out there. Want to hear my favorite part? They'll check for free. Yep. It won't cost you a dime to find out if you're insured insurance will cover GLP ones. 100,000 members and counting have trusted Roe to check their coverage and get the meds at the best price possible, depending on their insurance plan. Just submit your insurance card and Roe will create a personal insurance coverage report so you can understand your options. Go to roe.co slash Shannon for your free insurance coverage report. That's ro.co slash Shannon. Start losing weight sooner with GLP ones through Roe. Can you give us a breakdown of how you will allow blacks and other minorities to access capital? Because you speak yeah. a lot about capital and in order for people to become successful and have some wealth mm -hmm. is that they need to have access to yeah, that to right. get started. So that's in fact why I did starting um, last or earlier this year, my economic opportunity to wait before I was running for president, because I realized that so many of our entrepreneurs don't actually have the, the, that we need to do better in getting information to people about what's available to them. So for example, through the, the small business administration, there are funds available to help people create a business plan. There is resources available to help people just know how that you need to run a payroll, how you need to pay business taxes. Um, part of my plan, by the way, is to simplify taxes for small businesses. I, I like to say it's, it's basically that I'm going to date myself like, you remember the 1040s? Did you ever have to do a 1040s? Probably never. No. Okay, I did. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, simplifying tax returns right. for people, including our small businesses. But the work that I have done and will continue to do is about knowing that we don't lack for hard work. We don't lack for good ideas, but we do lack for information about the help that is available. Mm -hmm. Go James and the Lakers are back putting on a show. And you know I got to get the best deal on tickets. That's why I need to tell you about my sponsor, SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, festivals, and more sports. I'm excited to go see the Lakers dominate the Sixers at the Crip. They put all their tickets across the web in one place to make sure you're getting a good deal. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So look for the green dots, green means good, red means bad. And you know I came through for you guys. Use my code Shay Shay for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code Shay Shay. So that's part of how it is going to be about increasing access to capital. Part of it is about putting more money. So I called up and got in touch with and worked with some of the big CEOs of the biggest corporations in America and said, and the big banks that you all don't necessarily, you, you're not there in the community where you can get a $100,000 loan to a small business. You guys deal at a different level. But those $100,000 loans for a startup 
will go a long way. Let's get, get those billions of dollars that you've got, put them into community banks who are in the community, who know what the community needs, what they want, what the consumers there want, and then support those small businesses. So that's the, my approach to access to capital, including making sure that people um, have, again, simplifying taxes for small businesses. You know why, Shannon? Small businesses can't afford to hire a bunch of accountants yeah, they can't help you. and a bunch of lawyers. But that shouldn't be the reason they fail because they didn't fill out the form properly. Mm, right. Right. Yes. So my approach is really understanding the the culture, understanding the needs and then trying to fix problems. I love fixing problems with common sense solutions. And again, look, Donald Trump is never he is never going to relate necessarily to the kind of folks that I'm talking about who on the ground just need to be seen and heard. And then let's fix the problems. Let's address the challenges to let them not just get by, but get ahead. And I, I want to put a fine point on this. Maybe it's a new perspective. I think it is. I believe that we have had great success in bringing black unemployment down to historic lows. Yes. But for me, that's a floor. For me, that's a floor. Because what I know is that it should be baseline that everybody's working. That's not enough. People want to build wealth. Yes. And intergenerational wealth. Correct. And I want to help people do that. Right? Mm -hmm. I know what folks want to be able to take a nice vacation right. from time to time, have nice Christmas gifts for their kids under the tree. And it can't just be about, well, you've got a job, applaud me for, for what I've done for you. Right. And that's the spirit with which I do my work. Go James and the Lakers are back putting on a show. And you know I got to get the best deal on tickets. That's why I need to tell you about my sponsor, SeatGeek. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports, put all their tickets in. You guys, you, with promo, we talked about defunding. I saw President Trump on a- dollars off your first purchase with promo code Shay Shay. I saw President Trump on a, on a TV show and he talked about Defunding the Department of Education. Yes. Um, basically, we know that's going to affect communities like us um, that don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. And then because he says he doesn't, if they talked about slavery, if they talked about slavery, which is a, a part of our history, it's a it's That a they're stain. trying to cover up. Yes. That they're trying to cover up. They're talking Illuminati. We, I've had people on here and they talk about the Illuminati. Do you believe in it? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, people come on and think it's real. Yeah. Okay, so like, what are the other ones? There's the Illuminati, and who are the other ones that are like that? Um, there's like other secret yeah. groups, right? Yes, 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 secret societies. Right? I'm like, I'm rich as fuck, I'm Jewish. Nobody asked me to join any of them secret societies, right? right. Nobody. I'm like, <laughs> hello? <laughs> Can I at least get an invite to a cocktail party? <laughs> nobody, nobody. I'm like, Okay, maybe it's me. <laughs> <laughs> they figure that you go, you go, you go, uh, uh, blow the lid on the thing. Mark. No, if it's cool. I mean, I've been to many parties. I haven't said shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> social media. What are your thoughts on social media? It's I mean, good, bad, good and bad, right? It's not so good for kids anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not good when it comes to politics and medical information. There's a ton of misinformation, but I mean, when it's social, it can be great. But social media isn't social anymore. Right. You know, maybe some on Instagram, maybe some on TikTok, but even there, right, you post something you think is no big deal and people are killing you, right? They're giving you shit about everything just because they can. And um, there's just no way around that. And even worse, right, the way the algorithms work now, everybody's social media feed is different. Yes. You know, yours is different than mine, than different than each one of the folks here. Everybody's different. And so the way things are sold has changed. The way people consume information has changed. We have an election coming up, right? And everybody gets their own feed and nobody knows what's real information. And everybody now thinks of things in like 15, 30 second sound bites anyways. Delonte West, he's fallen on some hard times and you've done several times, you've reached out and tried to help how hard is it to see someone that, that played for you struggle um, with Brutal. mental health illness? Uh, Brutal, right? Because I thought we had him. I thought we had him turned around. You know, we sent him down to um, Jason's place down in Florida, mm -hmm. and it's like a farm, Jason Williams. And, 
you know, he's like, he's making progress, sending pictures. Dante's emailing me, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we're getting this. Then Dante throws his shit over the fence, disappears. We bring him back again. Making progress. This is it. Same shit. Only so much you can do. Wow. Yeah, what can people learn from that story? Mental, mental illness is real. It is real, and you just don't wish it away. You don't just rehab it away. You know, I've got other friends, you know, Tanya, these other people that I support and help. Um, you just, you want them to get help, but some things you can't help on everything. Right. You were the shareholder in Twitter before. No, I, wa I wasn't. You wasn't. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't. You, so what's your, what's your um, back and forth with? With Elon? Yeah. Oh, man, I, I just love to fuck with him. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like nobody likes to fuck with him, right? right. So I'm like, cool. Yeah, because he could turn your Twitter up. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, he's got really thin skin. And so it just makes it easy. It's like he sets himself up, right? When, right. when you think when it's your place and it's your business, it's like a club, right? Yeah, come on in, have a drink. And every, you just assume everybody's just going to really, you know, say yes to you, right? Right. Nobody ever says that dinner sucked, Right. I just, it's just fun. And I, I don't have anything personal against him. And I never initiate it, right? The only time I ever come go back at Elon is when he tries to fuck with me. So like, he's called me a racist. He's called me a fool. He's called me all these different names. So he's always calling me names and right. I don't care. But if you're going to call me a name, I'm just going to fuck with you, right? Because it's because <laughs> you're Elon. If it's just some random, what's the point? How important is this election? In 2024? Everything. To me, I mean, look, if you don't think Donald Trump is a threat you don't think this is the most important election. Um, I do. I just don't. I've known him for 25 years. I don't trust him, right? I don't think he's moral. I don't think he's ethical. I've seen him rip people off. I don't I don't believe pretty much anything he says. And so to me, you know, I've been trying to support Kamala. What are your thoughts on DEI? On DEI? I, I like it. I think it's good for business, right? right? Um, you know, I think a lot of people try to misrepresent what it is, but to me, diversity means, you know, good business. Go f look for people where other people aren't looking, right? Not all companies um, recruit at HBCUs, right? Correct. Not all companies recruit, you know, at you know, different schools where there's a large Indian population or where there's a large LGBTQ population. And so, you know, I want, like any other business element, I want to look where other people aren't because that's where you find smart people. And then once you find those smart people, that they got to be qualified. You're not hiring them if they're not qualified, right? But just some people think like, okay, I hired someone who's black or LGBTQ or Hispanic. Well, they must not be qualified. No, you're not going to hire them unless they're qualified, right? right? So the, the DEI doesn't mean hiring less qualified people. It just means finding people that are more diverse. Yeah, we're just they happen to be diverse, right? You're looking at other people, yes, right? Because you can be as diverse as you want. You can be LGBTQ, trans, black, and Hispanic, but if you're not qualified, not qualified. you're not getting hired, right? <laughs> right? That doesn't do you any good, right? right? But I want to go where other people aren't looking. And then once you hire them, the E is equity, right? It means I'm going to put you in a position to succeed. I hired your ass, right? Of course, right. I'm going to try so to I put you in a position. You. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the I, what we're talking about is just, I'm going to let you be you, right? And so being inclusive means if you're LGBTQ, if you're trans, I don't give a fuck as long as you're good, as long right? As you can do the job. I don't right. care. What I don't, you do. Yeah, I don't care, right? You can be a lumberjack. I don't, I don't care, care, right? Don't you can walk around singing a lumberjack song. I don't <laughs> care, right? But, you know, I'm going to make sure people in the workplace, in the organization respect that. Yes. Right? If, if you know, you're a boy and you want to call yourself Sue, I don't care, right? People are going to call you Sue. And some people, they use it as an excuse if they don't get a job. Right. Right? Oh, it must be DEI. No, I mean, I and think you qualify for the either you're qualified or you're not, right? And once you get there, just because you were hired and you're diverse, doesn't mean you're getting a promotion, right. doesn't mean you're getting the next job. And to me, that's what DEI is, and that's why I've been a big supporter. I want to get you out of here on this one. Mark, how hard, because you got married after you had already had some, some paper, yeah. major paper, how were you able to tell that, you know what, she loves me for being Mark? Or do we ever, do you really know? Yeah, of course you know. I mean, if she'll let you hit you with the Dutch oven. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I made her. I made her go to um, to um, 
Oh my God, Spicy Now, what the fuck? Um, the Little Burgers. White Castles, right. right? What? I made her go to White. That was the test before we got married. And so I'm going, we're going to White Castles because I went to school in Indiana. White Castles were everywhere, right? Yes. And so I'm like, we're going to White Castles. And if you really love me, you'll eat a White Castle burger. She did. Wow. Give me three things that you tell your kids. Because obviously you you want your kids to, to be productive citizens. Sure. You don't want to hand them everything. Sure. So what are some of the advice that you give your kids? Because obviously they know who you are. Yeah. They know what they yeah. what you have, so what they have. So number one is when your friends get drunk, nobody cares, right? When you get drunk, because you're my kid, you're on the front page of the paper and you're all over social media. So always pay attention to where you're at and what you're doing and be respectful, right? Um, Number two, you've got, you've got to set your own path. You know, you, you've got to understand that as you get older, you're going to want to de define your own future. So you're going to have to do the work. Like I literally just wrote my son a note to, to that effect. Um, and then just generally, right? And I say this to all kids um, and all people, right? To be successful, you have to be curious because the world's always changing. You have to be agile. Um, because the world's always changing. And then I, I, was, I also have a couple of really stupid sayings, right? And you asked for three, but I'm going to go further. Um, number one is how you do anything is how you do everything, right? It applies to sports, and I think it applies to life, right? And I'll leave it at that one because that, that's probably the most important because most people, they'll cut every corner that they can, right. and I don't want them to cut corners because, you know, they don't have to worry about money. Greetings, visitors to foxnewsnyu.com. Black Wolf the Dragon Master, New York's unofficial wizard, and Sir Aragorn, his faithful dragon, here to remind you New Yorkers, use your imaginations responsibly and meaningfully. The future of your city might simply depend upon it. Enough said. You see, you don't take stock in your eccentrics anymore. You find them people who are, by, by certain beliefs, or for the most part, mad, bad, and or dangerous to know. You will note that I said and or. We are neither mad, nor bad, nor dangerous to know. We simply belong to that most wonderful among fraternities, the weird, the wild, and the misunderstood. And as you know, only one person in all the multiverse fit those responsibilities to a T. He was Lewis Thomas Harden, late of Marysville, Kansas, but he preferred to be known by the sobriquet Moondog. There he stood in his full Viking regalia, determined to give a little bit of magic to those whom he encountered. Then in 1974, he practically disappeared. Where had he gone? Specifically to the village of Recklinghausen in Germany. Someone had told him about the wonders of Deutschland, and he'd grown so fond of the place, had Moondog, that he eventually made the decision to stay. Eventually falling in love with the lady who would become his transcriber and best friend, Fraulein Ilona Gable. It was with Ilona that he was to spend his last years, eventually forsaking his Viking regalia. Alas, Moondog passed away in 1999, not knowing... Silence! Lost it, dog. Thank you so much for interrupting the footage, you silly four-legged thing. Sadly, Moondog passed away in 1999 before he could complete work on his magnum opus. I forget its title. Moondog was rather experimental in writing his music and inventing some very quirky musical instruments. Those whom I've selected as my champions of the imagination, I have chosen them as champions of the imagination 
because they represent what Moondog's legacy upholds. They have little or no respect for the status quo. For them, normalcy is tantamount to boredom and inactivity, just as it is for yours truly. For them, normalcy and inactivity mean non-existence. They believe that proper usage of the imagination is tantamount to the future of mankind, as do I. And that is why I have given them the designation Champions of the Imagination. They uphold Moondog's legacy. They know, as did Moondog, that without imagination, humanity as we know it is simply meaningless. You have doomed yourself forever to a life dominated by the forces of doubt and by Merlin's beard. I don't intend to have my life dominated by the forces of doubt. I'll tell you that right now. There will always be those who get it about Black Wolf the Dragon Master and those who don't. To you who don't, I have little more to say, say fuck you. To the rest of you, what should we do about using our imagination? What have you done with your own dreams? How have you pursued them? How do you maintain your own wisdom? Do you like to call your attention to yourselves? Or do you think dreaming is as good as the next dream? Those are the questions you're going to want to ask yourselves as the multiverse goes your way. All right, we got a jumble jet coming up. Holla at thy dragon master, Anon. Here, here, here! Come away from that truck, dog, eh? I would be remiss if I didn't come out here and find out what you Jedi were up to. I need not ask, of course, so. Look at this. Look at this, it's a geek from another dimension. Lord of the Rings? Lord of the Rings? Come here. I am Black Wolf the Dragon Master. <laughs> New York's unofficial wizard, and don't you forget it. Alright. And don't you forget to finish your filet of fish. Oh, quiet. <laughs> Dragon Master. Oh, quiet. <laughs> Burger King, where all Dragon Masters eat. <laughs> So you're here just to pay your respects to the Jedi? Hello. You are one, you are one out you are one uninformed hound, you know that? Uh, it's called reality, my friend. Apparently the nerds are looking for a Jedi to challenge the nerd from Lord of the Rings. Whichever one of you wins is the Uber door. <laughs> not even lucky your, your, your superiors at late night even, even decided to let you out today. Seriously? Have yes. You, have you ever talked to a woman without having to give your credit card number? <laughs> <laughs> Fresh hound. Quite an imagination, yes. <laughs>